be better. Welcome back. And that's all. No, glad to see you. Uh, first show, we had a little glitches here and there, but we're up and running. Uh, glad to see you here for our fifth episode, uh, fifth episode, fifth season. Oh, it's going to be one of those. So bear with me. Um, my name is Dr. Hugh. I'm not a real doctor. I play one on the internet. But uh, we're here to answer your questions. That's the main focus of the carburation clinic is to answer your questions live that you may have about gas line installations, uh, crazy things you hear from people about propane and natural gas and how it'll burn up your engine. Like, you know, we've been burning up engines for nearly 30 years now, so uh, it's a joke. Um, we also, I wanted to mention, we have a new producer. His name is Eric. He's fabulous. He shows up on time. <laughs> And he's here for us. So uh, we plan on going back to our every Tuesday at 2 o'clock uh, episodes. So we welcome you every week. And, of course, during the week, you can always, if you want to have some customers like to have their uh, questions, because we go to uh, email questions. So if you have one, you say, hey, uh, I called in and they, uh, they answered my question. I think they should put that on the show. Suggest it. And if. If you do, we'll put it on and uh, be nice to have because we answer a gadzillion questions, I'll tell you that. Um, so anyway, uh, we'll get to our customer mail. Uh, we don't know about any junk to debunk, but we might come up with some. We have our trivia question for the week. And if you can answer that question, you get a beautiful tachometer. We'll give you a close-up of that in a minute. Uh, it's a very nice engine tachometer that we retail for 39 on, on here. So uh, if possible, invite your friends, especially with COVID. They're locked down doing nothing. And if they want to, some people just want to be bored. So if they want to be bored, send them on over. We'd love to have them. Oh, oh. so let's get into our show. Let me, uh, let's begin with our flame of knowledge. Flame of knowledge is lit, so we're going to, uh-oh, I think we're a little bit too much knowledge. All right, that's a little better. All right, anything yet live, sir? Oh, you have live, I mean questions, I mean, you know, like anybody has a question? Oh, if not, then we can go to the customer mail until we get them. Dwayne Wilson, does the kit comply with EPA specs? Yes, uh, EPA says, that's a very good question, by the way. Uh, especially with all this this day and age of regulations and, and issues, uh, there's EP, there are EPA regulations for manufacturers of generators and manufacturers of engines that they would have to have like a certified kit. Well, this is aftermarket, so uh, it's kind of like uh, aftermarket on your vehicle. There's many things you can do. So um, absolutely, there's. Uh, I'll tell you what it's, if you want to get a good idea what it's about, uh, it's kind of like when you buy something uh, that's wireless and it says, this device meets FCC regulations because it can accept an erroneous signal, uh, it cannot prevent it, yada, yada, yada. It's the same principle. Uh, if you were doing a radio station, you'd have to have some serious FCC licenses and so forth. It's the same principle. So. Very good question, Mr. Was his name Blaine? Okay. Same gentleman. Does Same gentleman. Does this kit increase crank case temperature? Crank case temperature. Uh, do you want it to? Uh, no. It, it runs just as cool or cooler than gasoline. And uh, that's achieved by running it lean. And that's the interesting thing about propane and natural gas. When you run lean, 
it's cool and clean. So uh, no, it has no uh, effect on increasing engine temperature. That would be a sad thing to have, but no, it does not do that. Man, he has the easy ones. He has one more. He has one more. For, for now, he's free to ask. Oh, yeah, no, he can go right ahead. Okay, that there's some uh, there's some variables to that. Of course, it's a little ambiguous. So you, he seems like a generalist, which is fine to be a generalist. But uh, if it was a depends on the size of the generator. Now let's think. People, I already got a phone call the other day from a buddy of mine. We we both own the same pool, and he's already starting to look to get parts for his pool. So it's interesting how some people are not like me, they're not procrastinators, and they're starting to think ahead. Well, let's think ahead to camping. Let's say you have a, a 2,000, 2,200, 2,400 that you're gonna take camping. Uh, a barbecue grill cylinder would be recommended for that, works just fine. The 20 pound cylinders, the 30 pound cylinders, they're all just awesome. If the portable generator was a, you know, a two barrel 30 horse, then you probably wanna consider a couple hundred pound cylinders. So, the cylinder, it's all based on vaporization. Uh, boy, I wish we could see that. Um, how portable is that camera? Uh, uh, no, nah, it's a, uh, like to, uh, eh, better not mess with it. Let me see if I, let me see if I can do it. First show, we can always do goofy stuff, right? Um, here, oh, I got it. Here we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. Everything's backwards, so. Now, you see the bubbles? See the bubbles in there? Isn't that neat? Because that's real propane. So that's bubbling at 44 below zero to replace the, the vapor pressures being lost due to the use of the flame. So that's a little flame. If it was a huge flame, this thing could ice up in a matter of a minute. So that's what it has to do with uh, the size tank for an engine. You just have to match uh, the size of the cylinder or device to the engine. And of course, we can answer all those questions precisely if you ask specific generator, engine, whatever. So there you go. All right. All right. I got it. We'll get that thing down. Uh, that's going to be a fun little camera to have there. I'm going to have to get a GoPro put on my head. Hey, that's the idea. Get a GoPro put on my head. Uh, All righty then. What else you got there, bro? That is our last live question. Okay. We can go to some uh, customer email, maybe. But thank you, Brian. Not Brian. What was his name? Blaine. Blaine. Thank you, Blaine, uh, for the, for your question. Oh, I'm sorry. I was distracted. My generator was. Oh. <laughs> Shift the screens on me. My generator was submerged in water. How can I get it working again? Okay, well, step one, get on your scuba gear. Step two, what? <laughs> Submerged in water. Oh, man. Uh, oh. That is a good one. Uh, my main concern would be the ignition system more than anything else. Of course, you can always drain. I remember I did my first, when I first got into mechanics as a teenager, I thought I could you know, fix the world, and I uh, actually had a 79 Zephyr, oh man, love that car, had a straight six, and had a burnt valve, so I said, hey, this would be a neat project, so I uh, I was going to pull the head, take it over, and get it, get it machined for me, right? Didn't drain the water out of the radiator, and so when I loosened a certain bolt, it's like, of course, all the water from the radiator went down into the crankcase. And uh, 
So of course you got to take care of that, clean all that out. But uh, I would spray the snot out of the the flywheel and you know, the spark pad, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, whatever you do, don't run it before you do that. <laughs> uh, that is it. I don't know if you can resurrect one of those. I suppose it'd be. A, have you heard of that, Sean, being resurrected? No. Oh. That is a. That's a unique question. But uh, yeah. Don't run it, clean it, dry it, and uh, make sure the ignition system. And that's what degradation of these things usually comes from moisture. Uh, so it is a good idea to spray. If you're going to keep your machine outside, it's a good idea to spray the, uh, the flywheel occasionally. And, yes, I can see that menu over there. Uh -huh. There's no problem. But on program, it looks fine. All right, so... How tank of pro? Oh, okay. How long will a generator run on a tank of propane? Well, it depends on the size of the generator, just like this flame. How long will this flame run on that sight glass? Well, it depends how long I have the flame on, of course, uh, how big I make the flame, and just like how, how much, uh, how many watts you're going to be operating at. And so um, there's variables. But let's take the basic. Let's, let's stick with the idea. I did, sometimes I go out, when I'm off script, I can't. Uh, did I mention camping? People are thinking about camping. Because I said something about the 2,000, 2,400. Oh, you guys aren't even listening. Oh, good. But anyway, let's say you're thinking about camping. Um, you can't do that to me. See, if you put up a new question while I'm answering the same, a question, I won't even have a clue what I'm I'm, I'm answering. I had something to do. Yeah, thank you. You don't realize this brain doesn't work like it should. Because uh, I go off into these general areas, and then I'm like, uh, where was I? So I need a compass back. But anyway, how long will the generator run on a tank of propane? So if you're talking about a portable, um, like a 2,000, 2,200, they can run up to 36 hours at very low usage. Like if you're using it for coffee pots and stuff like that when you're out camping. Uh, on an air conditioner, you probably get you know, a day, two days, solid running, that is, solid running. So, uh, But here's where this gets me off the hook every time, and our CSRs. You look at your paperwork that came with your generator, and it, it'll usually tell you that machine will use so much fuel at so much load and run for so long and use so much fuel. Well, just Figure of propane, it's a gallon to gallon. It's that close. A lot of times you'll get more out of propane than you will gasoline, but uh, it's typically gallon to gallon. So if it says you'll get eight hours on your 10,000 watt generator at half load with a five gallon tank, that means you'll get 10 hours with a grill bottle. So, uh, which, you know, grill bottle has basically five gallons of propane, 4.7. So there you go. I'm on the dark side of the moon. Oh, new question. What pressure does the engine regulator require? That would be uh, something like a standard, uh, there you go. Let's, uh, let's go to our little camera here. Uh, standard uh, regulator like you put on a, a barbecue grill. So uh, what was the question? Uh, what pressure? Yeah, so you need 11 inches water column. If it's natural gas, it's standard eight, uh, eight inches, seven inches, whatever. The engine regulator can handle down to four inches water column. And remember, it's 28 inches in a pound. So if it's, uh, these are rated you know, up to 14 inches water column, so they can handle up to half a PSI. And so uh, it, it's kind of, it's designed for your average system, propane or natural gas. Now, if you have a five pound natural gas system or two pound, then you'll have to have another step down reg, which I don't have here, but it'll step it down to uh, uh, five down to uh, eight inches water column, just like you would at a water heater. So there you go. That's stand it's just standard gas pressure. Einstein the cat. What in the world was that? All right. 
it keeps away. It says what? Oh, the same question? I don't want to answer it twice because that was from a cat. It says Einstein the cat. People are funny today, I'll tell you. Downright hilarious. You have any more in the, huh? It's showing your, uh, your file. Uh, Ablib? Hey, he's got one. Come on over here. Come on over. Here. Don't you? They can hear you better if you're over here. We got a ton of questions. Why don't you come over here? Uh, you, you, you want to be on TV? Come uh, on. Come on. Come on. It's from Stringfellow. Come on. Says, He's actually very handsome. You should see yeah. him. <laughs> He's confused about the why we recommend not getting a brand new tank. Ooh. Uh, man, where's my vaporization chart? All right. Oh, you can get a brand new tank. Have at it. You know. Eventually, you're gonna have, somebody's going to have to get a brand new tank, aren't they? But it has to do with purging. And, uh, man, where's my purge chart? We've been out of this for too long. I have to keep my purge chart. Oh, get Vanessa's CSR book, will you? Uh, she has it in there. When you, when you buy a, a, a cylinder, what in the world was that? When you buy a cylinder, uh, let's say it's a 20-pound cylinder. You buy a brand new cylinder. They're not purged, okay? Because they, I mean, They'd have to have gas in them if they're purged. So, so they're not purged. Now, some cylinders say that they're vacuum purged. It's an ugly looking book with all kinds of. It's a, oh, it's in their drawer. If you pull out a drawer in there, uh, or in, in their just look. Uh, when you uh, let me just stick with standard purging, then I'll talk about uh, vac so-called vacuum purging. But regular purging, you get a new cylinder. It's full of air. There's no gas in it, all right? So how do you get the gas out of it? How do you purge the, uh, anytime I talk about purge, people think about uh, New Year's Eve parties, but uh, how do you purge a cylinder? You, got, you have to get all the air out of it. How do you do that? Well, you have to pressurize it with vapor gas at a certain PSI and bleed it off, burn it off, bleed it off. Uh, it's a blue book, uh, but you might have it on your wall in there. Um, and when you do that, you get so much of the air out, and now you have a certain amount of propane in there. Then you pressurize the cylinder again, bleed or burn it off. Now you have even more uh, fuel-to-air ratio. And truly, for an engine, it takes like seven purgings to technically be useful uh, and get perfect you can get after about two or three well i should say three or four you can have it run but you're going to be adjusting so um here hand it to me sean oh see he won't come on board all right um let's go to our let's go to our camera on the scene uh, let me see if i can get that in there all right you see that so look at the first purging it says after you purge it the first time, there's 50% air remaining, 50% propane remaining in the tank. And the second purging, 25, you can see it. Look how it, and of course, as you get more of a ratio of propane to air, the ratio increases, so, but very slowly, isn't that interesting? So that's why, to run, all right, you can, you can get by with, I put that back up. I just like to show that, if you don't mind. I've been watching, uh, uh, what's his name on Rumble, uh, Bongino. <laughs> He's always, hey, put that back up. Leave that up. I want to show you something. So I've, I've got some bad habits I picked up on. Uh, but he's good at this, and I'm not. So. Uh, see, I went off into another world. I forgot where I was at. Oh, yeah, on a, on a gas grill, 25% air, 75% propane, you'll be just fine. 50-50, it'll probably work as well on a gas grill. But we need down in here for an engine. All right, so why is that? That's the question. Well, a burner uh, will work with extra air coming in with the fuel, but you'll get what I call the blowtorch effect. And if you've ever gotten a grill bottle that's not purged correctly on a, on a grill, you'll go to light it, 
And sometimes they're hard to light, but once they light, they have that blowtorch effect. Is that a good effect? Nah, it's no good. You get it. It, uh, it makes a lot of racket. People, when they first get their grill, they go, man, that thing's loud. And then they realize after a while, uh, after they get their cylinder refilled or get the right cylinder, well, that grill's pretty quiet now, see? So you can buy with it on a burner because you're on a, on a Venturi. Boy, I wish I had a Venturi to show you. Uh, on a Venturi, air and fuel comes in together to the burner, okay, and then is ignited. So uh, somewhere along the flame path, that, oh, man, my, my knowledge went out. Somewhere along the path, uh, you'll get, uh, like, when you first get a grill, this flame won't be lit until it's up in here because it's too lean. And I just burnt my fingertip. Oh, what in the world are you handing me this way? <laughs> it was our Ventura. I was thinking, uh, you know that burner we have for that water heater back there with all that control on it and everything? That's kind of the Venturi I had in mind. Sorry. I confused them. But, uh, so, but on an engine, if you, that, that cylinder at 50-50, you're introducing an air-fuel mixture of 50-50 into, well, actually what Sean gave me is good, like a Venturi that is designed for uh, bringing in air through here and then adding fuel. So if you were bringing in 50-50 and then you're adding, which is already fixed amount, it can't ignite, it's too lean. That's limits of flame. Hey, where's my limits? Oh, I didn't put it together. Ah, I got a limits of flammability device I could have showed you when something's too lean or too rich, it won't burn. And if you haven't seen Wolfie, you gotta see Wolfie from last, was it last year? Oh man, love Wolfie. We blew up Wolfie because I was showing how air fuel mixtures, if they're too rich, it won't ignite. Too lean won't ignite. But just the right amount, boom, literally boom. Uh, blew the end right off of it. Anyway, so Wolfie's down. We're going to get them rebuilt. But uh, So anyway, yeah, so that's why you can't use a new cylinder. You're introducing an air fuel mixture into an air fuel mixture. Whew, that was a long way around that mountain. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll do that, and then I'll do my trivia question. If there's nothing else, we can let people go. Um, just want to let everyone know we came out with, if you haven't seen it, let your friends know. If you don't own one, but you know somebody does, we now have the, uh, the Honda 7000 kit for the new Honda 7000 EFI fuel injected. And uh, this is the computer that runs it. It's a really a smart system. You can, it's the only one on the market that's tri-fuel. You can run all three fuels, propane, gasoline, natural gas. Uh, let me, I don't know what that was. Uh, there you go, that's the module. It actually has a brain, ties into, your OEM, into the OEM wire harness. And on the go, you can flip from alternative fuel well, gasoline, alternative fuel, and back. And we have done it while it's running, right? And it just switched right over. It's the coolest thing. So you could literally have a switch, and we can help you with the technology, that if it ran low on gasoline, or it would automatically switch over to alternative fuel. Or if it's on alternative fuel and it ran out of the propane pressure drop, drop, drop to a certain level, and apparently it was going to run out, it would pick up on that and, you know, automatically, not without flipping this, but it, it'd be, we have a connector here you can unplug and change this, you know, manual switch over to anything automatic, remote start, all kinds of things. So it's a, it's a beautiful system. As a matter of fact, they're on sale right now on eBay. If you want to save, I think we have $88 off on the last few that are remaining. Uh, we've sold 70 on there recently and we have like, I don't know, there's like half a dozen left. So if you know anybody with a Honda 7000, let them know. 
It's a sweet thing to have. All right. Can I have this? <laughs> no. Maybe I can get a copy of it. It'd be nice to have. I don't know what happened to mine. I had it in my. All right. Our trivia question for the week. And I want to show you the. Did I show already the, the uh, the. The very nice. Uh, you can set. What was the things you can set on this? You can set uh, how long to change the oil. Uh, uh, it was, it's, it really is very adjustable, very nice unit. Uh, it's on our website for 39 And you can have one of these free sent to you uh, for answering. First one to answer this question will get one. And are you ready for the question? Now, I'd like to ask so many other different trivia questions, but in this day and age of Google, it's cheating, you know. Uh, my daughter does one of those bling bling shows, and she'll ask about a song, and you know, it's just whoever's fastest at Googling it, unless they just happen to know. I can name that song in two, uh, two notes. So, I thought we would, hey, let me, let me do that over here. I think it'd look nicer. Let me see. How's that look? Oop. Let me get it out here. All right. Everybody familiar with these? They've been around for years. And you know the principle. You have five steel balls. Some have ten. And you lift one of the steel balls. And the ball at the opposite end will retreat. You can take two steel balls. Two balls will retreat. Now, what will happen? we got an odd number here. we got three and two. What would happen if you do three of them? Hmm. What do you say, Sean? Three against two. What's going to happen? I think both of them or all of them start moving. All right. Three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two. Isn't that cool? This was invented, oh man, I forgot how many years ago. All right, now here's the trivia question. Are you ready? How long, how long, all right, I got this ball up. How long does it take when this ball strikes here for the effects to be transferred to this ball to make it retreat? So how long does it take for this to happen? And I guarantee you, you can't Google that one. So first one to answer that question gets a free tachometer. All you got to do is call 1-800-553-5608, or you can do it on Facebook or whatever, right? They can uh, contact us, but if, and we'll get your mailing address, and we'll send you one right out. Uh, we also like to mention, if you want to be a dealer, we get people all the time want to be a dealer, You can we'll, we'll set you up. With the amount of kits you purchase, you get discounts. And if you're, if the world ever gets back to where we can do uh, shows in the spring for camping and hunting and fishing, if you set up a booth and show, and there's there's nice uh, nice uh, demos you can put up. Not necessarily a flame of knowledge, but there's nice demos you can put up. And once you start talking about these generators and the kits, and you'll get people. All around you, you would not believe. We did, last show I remember, well, we, we do Bridge Day here in West Virginia, and we set up three generators along the walkway where people would go. And I'd look around, I'd go off while the people, you know, our employees were working the, the show, and you just see semicircle of people around each generator as they were discussing how, uh, how it works and so forth. And we did, the Airstream show uh, last year, I think, or a year before, they had this huge tent in the grass. And everyone was down at our end of the building, or the tent. It was, it was fabulous. And I don't know why I keep staring at myself. I, sh I should stare over the here. And I'll tell you, I'm rusty there, Eric. I don't know. I don't, now I know why you said you don't know if you want to put your name on this or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, if you want to be a dealer, let us know. Uh, info at uscarb.com, and we'll set you up. If, uh, if you know anybody has a small engine repair shop, does lawnmowers, because remember, you can do lawnmowers, weed eaters, well, four-cycle weed eaters, 
do lawn mowers, pressure washers, wood splitters. There's nothing like grabbing your wood splitter two, three years later and just firing it right up on propane and have it be more powerful. We have a, we have a video on YouTube about the uh, wood splitter and uh, it, was, it was one of those things you don't plan on and uh, we had this one log that we couldn't, we were breaking the unit in on gasoline and trying to get through this one stump log and had to push it off to the side. Well, once we got the propane on, we were splitting wood for the video and uh, the guy with me, I pointed at that log. I said, get that one over there, bring it. And I didn't know because we hadn't tried it. I said, let's see what happens. So we brought it over, pulled it, and it powered through that thing where the gasoline wouldn't. So what does that tell you? Uh, propane can be more powerful than gasoline. Um, but our, we hope to transfer to Rumble some of our videos soon, but if, uh, if you haven't seen the, how much propane is in a cylinder that you buy at the rack, you know, when you spend, I keep looking down, you have to put a sign, quit looking at yourself. I'm not vain, but I'm just not brain, I'm brainless. Uh, went to the rack to, to weigh the propane cylinders for my tractor, because I have a tractor at home. Uh, yeah. Camera, Eric. It always does that with the shininess. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Where in the world? I'm glad that was only that picture. No. <laughs> it must have came in. Uh, boy, that's hard to do when it's backward. You see that? That's my John Deere. What is that thing? It's a John Deere, I can't remember. Five, huh? 2010, 2010. It's a 60s, 60s vintage. I know I'm moving it around. It's hard to do when it's backwards. But it runs off two grill bottles. And if you notice on the back end of that thing, there is a six foot brush hog and it'll just rip through anything. Isn't that sweet? Of course, it was a gasoline tractor. But uh, I was measuring those cylinders here. At our rack. We have a rack here at the shop. And uh, it is a cute kid, though. And uh, I, I wanted to br bring home the cylinders with the most gas in them. And the only way to tell is by weight, as you know. And I was weighing them, and every cylinder was 15 pounds. I was like, oh. And come to find out, they got a sign on there that says minimum net weight or yeah, minimum net fuel 15 pounds. So. If you haven't seen that episode, I think we're up to 100,000 views on that one. It was a pretty nice video. And just did that driving in one day. I was like, hey, be. So anyway, that is that. Let's see. Uh, all right. So I guess that's it unless you have anything new live. Yeah, we're just getting started again, so I had to get people uh, letting them know that we're going to be here. So uh, thank you for tuning in for the first fifth season episode of the, the uh, Carburation Clinic with Dr. Hugh. Invite you back next Tuesday at 2 o'clock. If all goes well, you never know how weather or insurrection or whatever you got out there can, can happen. <laughs> uh, but if Eric can tra transverse the mountains, we will be on next Tuesday at 2 o'clock. So uh, Hope to have a couple other things for you, uh, fun to look at. Until then, uh, appreciate you tuning in. Stay safe, stay well, stay warm, and uh, catch you next time. <laughs>